Oh, all you hardcores out there, how are you doing? I see from Porky's Corner, the biggest gob in sport. Let me just get this hat off. I'll put this hat on here. Oops. Bit too big for me, that. Right, the gentleman from Scotland who sent me this hat, who went to the Knock Hill racetrack on the Cobra Carl Froch, uh day that he went and Carl Foggett and all, and all them. Thank you very much. I'm more of a Michelin man myself, tyre man. Uh, or at the moment, uh, Kilnurst Tyres at Kilnurst. Uh, for economy. <laughs> Get economy tyres on. The tyres like any other tyre. One bit of rubber, don't tell another bit of rubber, it's better than it. It's a bit like uh, people who buy Marks and Spencer's tomatoes. A Marks and Spencer tomato, don't tell a little tomato that it's better than it. Because if it were better, it wouldn't fresh its veg, wouldn't it? This year and last year, but it didn't, did it? So no matter what they charge, you know what I mean? So... But getting back to this art, it's all right. But like I just said, uh, I'm an uh, economy man for the tyres. <laughs> but thank you very much. Right. Uh, let me get this off. It's a bit hot with this on. The old Kit Chris Medley uh, Kings Boxing Gym representing you for you there, Chris. And Nikki. Hope you're well. Uh Let's get stuck in. Got a few things now. I thought we'd get a few videos done. Uh, I'm not really commenting about this, have I really? Only to other people, but... What did I think of... Fabio uh, Wardley and... David Adelaide. What did, what did I really think about that? I thought... Uh, I thought it were a poor job looking at it. British heavyweight champion, right? Getting cut on his face from one of David Adelaide's friends. You wouldn't have that, would you? You wouldn't have somebody coming and disrespecting you like that. I understand all that... Uh, well, I've got a laminate and I don't want to lose my laminate or your license and whatnot, a border control license. Whether you're a trainer, a manager, a promoter, or a fighter, cut man, seconds, chief seconds, whatever, if somebody put hands on you, know, somebody puts hands on you at a press conference, you don't have that, in my opinion, unless it's a put up job. Now we've got up with room for a fighting man and not, nobody's thrown one punch. But if there'd have been an alcohol around, it'd been in a nightclub and rolling around on the floor. So in my opinion, it's just like everything else. It's all premeditated to hype the fight up, to get interest in it. Because interest in fights now generates money and views and popularity and all that nonsense. And everything's spurred by views now and what, you know, that's why people are working hours and hours and hours and chasing views and so that's my opinion of it it's a put up job if it weren't a put up job Fabio Ward was a wet fart in it for like allowing that to happen because you just won't allow that to happen at all would you well I wouldn't so but it's fake beef fake beef Wilder and Big Meech You can see it's doing me nothing. Wilder and Big Meech. Right. Do I see it happening? I don't know, really. I remember when Wilder came over to the UK and he flattened Audley Harrison just before Joshua was signing with Barry Earn. And I remember what Barry Earn said. We're going to keep Joshua away from Tyson Fury, Louis Ortiz, and Deontay Wilder. 
I mean, he's just about for everybody except them, hasn't he? Ortiz is over, over ill now and gone. Uh, Fury don't even look like he's interested. Does Fury even need Joshua now? He's earning millions without him, isn't he? So it's all worked out good for Tyson in the end, doesn't it? So, and Wilder would light him up, wouldn't he? So I don't see it happening. People keep going on about it. And it's like, you know, I've got to the stage now where I can't take it anymore. We can't take it anymore listening to utter drivel and babble, baba. Because that's what it is, isn't it? Utter baba. You know what I mean? Where's all this Saudi money? Where is it all? Hey? Eh? Where's it gone, this Saudi money? I don't know. It was supposed to be there, wasn't it? Skills challenge, promotions. Not there no more, is it? We've had one, one heavyweight fight, haven't we, in a year? Or this year? Have we? Have we even had that? I think we've had one heavyweight fight, haven't we, this year? That's it. It's a bit of a joke, isn't it, really? One heavyweight world title fight this year with that Chisora from Tyson. Not good, is it? Who's second fought in, uh, in over a year? Oh, we've had one, haven't we, this year? Is it just one? Chisora, uh, not Chisora. We've had Usa, can't we, Daniel Dubois? And last one before that were Tyson against Chisora. It's not a lot, is it, really? It's not good enough. Uh, is the Saudi money... Is the Saudi money there? I'm not so sure myself now. I'm not so sure. Next, they'll be talking about having it at Man United's ground or Tottenham's or Wembley, you know, Wilder, Joshua, or Eddie's already talking. Madison Square Garden and Vegas, isn't it? So it looks like Plan A's out at window now. It looks like they're well and truly on the way out, doesn't it, Macho and Saudi? So we're going to see, aren't we, Fury on Garno? Is it a joke? Fury saying he's going to fight John Jones. Might even fight him in cage. Might even fight him Garno in cage. Look, I ain't got a problem with any of that. Keep piling them millions of pounds up, Tyson Fury. Keep doing it. But vacate that WBC belt and the belt in and let the next in line fight for it, because we do need an undisputed champion. If you're not prepared to play ball with this undisputed, what's the point? You know what I mean? You're becoming irrelevant in boxing. Just keep fighting these non-boxers. Nobody's got a problem with that. But don't say you're a boxer if you're fighting non-boxers. Hand the belt in and let the number one and number two guys that are ranked below the champion, let them fight for it. That's what any normal good person would do, isn't it? Unless you're just rotten to the core and you want to make it about yourself. So I look at it. So... Do I see Fury and Angano happening? Well, they're saying October 28th, aren't they? They've had all these press conferences and all that. But if it didn't happen, what if it didn't happen? What, what if there was some snag with money? Where would that lot leave all this Saudi dream for everybody? Because it's already looking like it's uh, a bit far-fetched, isn't it, really? It like some of them episodes up at Dennis's where we were putting world title fights on on yachts. Don't worry about it. We're going to put Josh Whale on a yacht in Gibraltar for WBF. Featherweight title, Porky. So what? Josh Whale on a boat in the middle of a pandemic for WBF. World title of featherweight, Dennis. Pop, pop, bang on that one. Told you I'd have some bubbling porky. Yeah, really surprised me with that. What happened to that, Dennis? What? What? What happened to that? 
bit like Dave Allen's British title shot, wasn't it? Hey. If you want to talk to me about some at Bubbling, go speak to Liam Cameron about Dennis, all you boxing fans. Get in touch with Liam Cameron. He probably comes on my channel in the next couple of weeks and uh, tells the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but. <laughs> the God. I've heard the God's bringing out a fitness book and a cookbook, nutrition book, stuff like that. Why don't you just do a fitness video instead of a book? The God's lost a couple of stone. All of a sudden, he's an expert. Try losing 19 stone, nine pounds. If you want to talk about dieting and taking it to the very edge, 19 stone, nine pounds. Hey, try losing that, Gav. Then come see me. All right. I put a bit of weight on since then, so I think my overall weight loss was 17 stone, seven, 17 stone, eight, something like that. It is. But at one point, it was 19 stone, nine, but I put a couple of stone on. We're about 30 pounds since then. Uh, so the gad. If you do bring a fitness video out, gad, I'm going to get it my grandma for Christmas. All right. Uh, ben fighting in Orlando. On 23rd of September. Well, what date are we on today? So he's going to fight in another week, is he? In Orlando. That'll be interesting, won't it? Crush your bed in Orlando. <laughs> oh, God. I bet people will be queuing up for that, won't they? Dylan White. Where's Dylan White? Well, we don't know where he is, do we? Is he hiding? I don't know. I don't know where he is. But he's missing in action, isn't he? Dylan White, MIA. Where are you, Dylan? You got your phone number here. Somebody sent me your phone number. I might give you a ring, Dylan. Should we ring Dylan White up on here one day for a laugh? See if he answers the phone. Bro, bro, bro. Giving it that one on your side of mouth. Uh, Liam Beefy Smith. No excuse as I was flat after 40 seconds in round one. I had to lose 42 pounds, but no excuses. Chris was great on the night, but a man won. It wasn't my night. I had an ankle injury, but no excuses. Back injury as well. I won a trilogy on pay per view, but I've got no excuses. But I want to fight him again because it's won all now. Beefy, do you know once you've come out after a fight and said, I had till I was 42 pounds, I had an ankle injury, I had a back injury. You've said all that, and it's a pay-per-view. There's no way on earth you're ever, ever, ever going to get a third fight, is there really? He'd been better off coming out saying he was just too strong for me and I don't know what happened, he my night, and that's it. Stop with all this excuse nonsense. Stop it. Stop it. All right. You're already on back foot with fans now. Because of your pride, you say, yeah, I had a beating pack, lost all that weight, or had them injuries. You signed a form, Liam Smith. One hour before you get in the ring, the doctor comes in. He says, are you fit to fight? And you say, yeah. And he says, right, put your moniker here. And that's it. Once you sign that, if you die in that ring, nobody can be charged. You understand, don't you? No. You've got in that ring ill prepared, injuries, weight issues, whatever, been laid up at home. It were you that were putting food in mouth, but once you got in that ring and said you were all right, and you obviously weren't, you disrespected boxing fans. So I've had to think about it, Liam Smith. That lot of talks, but I'm not going to set about it either, but I've had to think about it. And you don't deserve a third fight. All right. Me, I did not. Oh, this is uh, agencies. You know, agencies ringing up all the time. This is Sweden, man. Mm. Who 
two seconds. Hello. Cheers, mate. Uh, so this is how I look at it, right? The Saudi outfits, the two Saudi outfits, are they too good for boxing? Hey, is it is it too good to be true? Is it too good to be true? These people throwing all these millions at the sport. Well, where, where's this skill challenge lot? Where are they now all of a sudden? It's all shrouded in mystery, isn't it? Hey, is it straight money, this skills challenge thing? It's all a bit up in air because up until a few weeks ago, they were the big dogs, weren't they? It was skills challenge this, skills challenge that, private jet this, hotels with butlers that. Now all of a sudden, it looks like there's no like no Saudi money there. There is this other lot. So, my dad always used to say to me when I was a kid, "If it's too good to be true, Ross, it's bull." And there has been times where I didn't listen, and you were right. So, as far as I'm concerned, whatever happened to Wembley Stadium being the Holy Grail? It was good enough for Broch and Groves, wasn't it? Hey. Right? You get between eighty and ninety-four thousand in there, depending on what time at month and how they are logistically for transport and people working overtime and that. So between eighty and ninety-four thousand people. Isn't that enough? And there enough money to go around there for everybody, or or does everybody have to be greedy with this Saudi stuff? Because I think all these boxers, trainers as well, managers and promoters. And all these advisors and all these Klingons that get in these little groups with these fighters, they've all had a good tatar -ta -ta with all these fighters, telling them they're going to get this and they're going to get that. And it's bang on, that money's there and all that. Well, it looks like it isn't there now, doesn't it? Or if it is, it's not, there's not as much as there were before, is there? So why can't people just push for Wembley Stadium or Old Trafford or... Tottenham Hotspur's ground or Anfield or Bolton Wanderers ground. There's there's plenty of stadium fights in the UK if fighters are willing to work together. Just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. So all right, is it or is it just stalling tactics from the Saudis? I don't know, but just dragging on in it. So okie dokie. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Don't have nightmares. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. And thank you very much for sharing the videos. All right. Peace out.